Robert from Manhattan Wood Project. I have a quick tip on adjusting belt tension on your X-Carve. I'm going to show you how I adjust it, what I adjust it to, and in case you don't want to buy a scale like I use, I'm going to show you at the very end of this video how to build your own cheap man's belt tensioning scale. So stay tuned, let's tension some belts. So what should I make today? Manhattan Wood Project. That looks great! Proper belt tension on your X car is important. If it's too tight, it pushes down on here and causes your stepper motors to have to work extra hard and you'll lose steps. If it's too loose, well, the pulley won't be able to grab onto the belt as well and you'll lose steps because it isn't grabbing onto the belt. So it's important to have your belt tension just right. Now I'm still trying to figure out the right tension, but I think I have a setup that works just fine for me. So let me show you what it is. And before I go, you'll see that I have some tape on the rails here. I put that on there just basically to keep some debris and chips from flying up onto the belts in the areas that I most commonly use the X-Carve. You don't have to do it, but uh, it can help prevent belt damage or uh, dust buildup on the belts. Now notice that I start with my X-Carriage and Gantry all the way back in the back left corner. I do that for a reason, to get the longest belt spans that I can. I have all three uh, rails marked where its center line is between right over here where it's tied down and over on the roller wheels themselves. So you want to mark that and get center line as well as you can. Now you'll see that here on my x-axis I have center line marked as well. I just marked it using a pencil. It doesn't need to be exact and pencil is not going to hurt because you can always touch it up. It's not scratching the paint. It's not damaging anything. Now I spent seven or eight bucks and bought a nice little fish weighing scale off of Amazon. I really like this because and it's more accurate than I could ever need and it goes up to 110 pounds. But I'm just looking for three, four, five pounds. So what I do is I take the hook put it under the belt right on the center line mark and then I'll pull it up about an inch or so and then the uh, tension that it takes to pull it up an inch is what I call my tension so in this case about three and a half pounds now if I would wanted to do it exactly I would have gotten down got an eye level with the scale made sure that the uh, belt was exactly one inch so I'm just looking for rough estimates here but for me three and a half pounds seems to work really well now that's all it takes to tension the belt you do it one two three times you can pull the gantry all the way forward and check the x-axis right here from the front it doesn't matter where you are as long as you have the longest uh, span of belt possible on the x and y axis you're good so if you don't want to buy a scale, or if you don't have access to one like that, there is another way you can check tension. You can make a poor man's tension gauge. It's really easy. It counts on the fact that this weighs 8.35 pounds, so we're going to round and we're going to say two and a half times more than the tension that I want to put on here. So I took a small one inch tall piece of uh, plywood, just one inch tall, and that is going to get put under here. Now, center that over my center line. See, I have a spot marked on here for a pivot and for a weight. This, if you can't guess, is going to be the weight. The distance between here and here, this is, uh, this over here is two and a half times longer than this. So this is actually 15 inches and this is six. But all that matters is that you get the ratio right. This can be say 12 and a half and 5. Now for the pivot, I just use a piece of 2x4. There's two holes drilled in here to hold a piece of 3 quarter inch dowel. Now I did drill it so that there's a little bit of an angle just so I didn't have the plywood try sliding off the end. There's two holes in here because you're going to use this one for your x-axis. Just take the uh, 3 quarter inch dowel, throw it in up here, and then use that. So I'm going to sit that where it says pivot. 
Okay. Now the height of these holes is dependent on your cart and the height of the X-carve itself. Now I'm going to take my eight and a half ish pound weight and I'm going to put it in here. Now if I have it tensioned correctly then this is not going to lift up on the belt. Right now there is no gap between the plywood and the maker slide itself. Now let's say we were to increase the ratio. Let's move this in an inch or so. Now there's a slight gap between the belt or there's a slight gap between the plywood and the maker slide. Moving in a little farther and now there's definitely a gap. I can move it around. It's not even touching the maker slide. So basically figure out what ratio you want figure out what tension you want and there you go. So, so again to sum this up I like having about three and a half pounds of tension on the belt for now. That might change if I start experiencing some uh, tight or loose belt problems. Anything higher, I had, used to have my belt sit at five, six pounds and I snapped three belts over the matter of a few weeks. Still trying to dial it in, but right now three and a half pounds to lift this one inch is all I need. So, gallon of water, one to two and a half ratio, and a one inch tall piece of plywood. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, then please leave a thumbs up on YouTube, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Please share this video if there's someone else that you think could use it. I'm still trying to figure this out. I think a lot of people on the Inventables forums are, but I will try and put out as many little tip videos as I can, just to make this easy on everybody. We're a good community. A lot of smart people, a lot of awesome people. Everybody's always willing to help. I'm just trying to do my part. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next project. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, or if you like my channel, please consider subscribing. You can hit the big subscribe channel below, or hit my little logo up here. Also, please consider subscribing to my upcycling channel, Round Trip Upcycling. You can just click on the logo right up here.